Hello, and welcome to Two Dancing Clamps. This tutorial shows how to get the bounding box for a series of letters and use this to move the letters to a specific location using instance on points. The true primary tricks are to use accumulate fields to calculate the extents of each letter and named attributes to associate each letter with original position and tangent. The project file for this tutorial is available on Gumroad. Just follow the link below. And before we dig in, one thing I want to point out is like, and we'll get to this later, but the, one of the first things we'll do is we'll use store named attributes to associate each point on the curve with its current position and its current and its tangent. The cool thing about this trick is, as we go through instance on points, these values get passed along and show up in each instance. And later on, when we realize these instances, these values are also available for each vertex edge and face in the resulting file. So this is a spreadsheet that shows the final thing. So you can see these are where the vertex is wound up. This is the index of the letter. So we know all of the vertexes associated with zero are from the first letter. All the vertices associated with one are with the second letter. And for each one of these, we have the tangent that belongs to it from the original point along this curve and the position from the original point along the curve. This duplicates some of the goodness you can get with capture attributes, but in the end, it's way more powerful and it's easier to use because, again, you're not dragging noodles all the way across your map. The other thing this is super useful for is, again, because you see this data here and you get to control this, if you have problems when you're coming up with uh, geometry nodes, this is the best debugging technique I have found, bar none. You get the visual result, but then you also get the numbers anywhere you want them, and you get to decide which values show up in this spreadsheet. It's fantastic, and it's a huge time saver. For this video, I'm going to make extensive use of Node Wrangler, so let's make sure that's enabled. Edit Preferences, and it is enabled. First thing we need is some geometry notes. And we won't need the original cube. Let's start with the circle. And give it a respectable size. And we're going to have 12 letters in our text string, so let's just go ahead and give us 12 points on the circle. And if I don't add a reverse curve, the letters will show up on the inside rather than the outside. It's no big deal, but just better. It's visually better if we have them on the outside. Now, so this, this circle will be the points that we'll be placing our letters on. We want to add a couple store named attributes. This will be vectors. First one will be for the position. And we'll call this. And the second one will be for the tangent. So again, what this will do, this will create entries in the geometry for this, and these values will influence every piece of geometry that derives from this. Now let's give ourselves some string curves. And we'll use, use the classic hello world. Let's give ourselves a little bit size. 13 will be good. Okay. Let's use fill curve to make the strings appear a little bit more prominently. And run this to instance on points. And join this with our curve so we can see both. Yeah, 
That's not right. Excellent. And we get a hello world at every point, which is not what we want. So let's pick instances. Cool. Now we get a bit of a weird effect. And this is because each letter has its original X offset as it from here. So that gets added to the instance on points. So as so the letters travel away from the points. We can fix this. Now later on, we'll want to be able to associate each vertex with the letter it came from. So let's capture that too. And this could be an integer. It'll just be the index of the instance, because that's each letter is an instance at this point. And we'll call this In the original version of this, I tried to do, accomplish a similar thing with mesh islands, but the problem is when you have compound letters like E's, the inner part is a separate island from the outer part, and they won't be positioned and rotate with each other like you want. So again, surname to attribute comes to the rescue. Now we want to perform some operations on each letter, and to do that, let's go ahead and push them back to the origin. So to do that, We'll do a set position. In this case, if we give it a vector of all zeros, it'll believe us and send all everything back to the origin like we want. And because we're we want because we're going to be operating on individual vertices, we need to realize them. And eventually we're going to do a set position to move the, each letter from um, the origin to where it belongs on the point. Cool. And now we'll do the math for that. So the way we're going to accomplish this is we take the position of every vertex in a letter and add them together and then divide by the number of vertices. This will give us the farthest extent of each letter. And we'll add them up by using an accumulate field. And I want another one of these because one is going to total the vertices. The other one is just going to count uh, the number of vertices. Now, we want to address each letter separately. We don't want to deal with the entire mass of them. So how do we do that? We give each letter a group index, which is one of our named attributes. It's the letter attribute we created just above. Letter index. And oh, I see now that star named attribute, I assigned it to a point. There are no points. It's all instances at this point. Uh, so let's store it on an instance. Now, if we take these, this total of vertices and divide it by the number of vertices, and if I multiply this in the x by minus 1, what this will do is take the letter and center it on the origin. Excellent. So now each letter has its origin in the middle of it, which is excellent. That's what we're going to use for this. That's what we're going to use for the rest of this video. If I wanted to, I could also multiply the y by minus 1 and have the letter exactly centered on the origin. Um, I don't want to do that in this case. Um, I just don't want to do that in this case. This trick of moving things to the origin and doing math on them is something I do a lot. It would be technically possible to leave them at their instance locations and do similar thing. It's just that all the math gets more complicated, more difficult to debug. Move it to the origin, do your thing, move it back when you're done, so much easier. Now we need to put the letters back and rotate them. So let's work on the rotation. Let's grab the named attribute. We're going to use the tangent. We will, there is a simple two-step process to come up with a rotation. So arc tangent 
converts a vector into a rotation value in radians that we can use, which is ideal. And actually, this is going to be the angle. What we want to rotate is the position of each vertex. Let's go ahead and duplicate a set position. Now each letter is rotated properly, and we just need to offset it. And what would we offset it by? The named attribute we saved earlier, which is letter position. And I realize now that Hello Space World does not have 12 letters, but Hello Space World Space does. And I did it this way originally just to make it look a little bit better. And that's our result. Um, you can find this project file on Gumroad. Uh, that project file also contains a way to wrap an entire string smoothly to a curve, preserving the spacing. You'll notice this one, because we're dealing with each letter separately, any kerning between the letters or any spaces are absolutely lost. So this is only useful for dealing with letters individually. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.